Okay, I'm headed to down to have coffee with commercial voiceover artist William H. Morrow III. It happens to be, oh gee, what's going on now? It happens to be Wednesday. Look at this truck block blocking the street. I need to, I mean, what God owns these truck drivers are? How the fuck am I supposed to get to where I have to go? Waste services. Now, how am I going to get in here? All right. Should I try? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You believe this fucking shit? You believe that? I just barely made it. The Gavon, the, the fucking truck driver, as you can see in the rear view mirror, can't like think, well, if I'm if I'm here for a reason, let me move up just enough for a large vehicle or truck. What if I had a big Hummer? What if I had a big Hummer? Or a big a big uh, a Dodge Ram pickup truck? I wouldn't be able to get, I would have to take a detour. I don't believe it. I don't believe the drivers. The rudeness, the discourteousness of drivers What's worse, the drivers in the New York metropolitan area or the, or the millennials? I don't know what's worse. I really don't. I'm gonna park right next to Billy Morrow. Okay, unbelievable, unbelievable, incredible, incredible. It is never a dull moment. In the end times, how society has become. Never a dull moment. Speaking of her, wouldn't it be funny if I if I asked her uh, if I told her about my Cyroflex shower head with detachable hose, actually beats swamp ass, and she would say, "Jimmy, what is swamp ass, Jimmy?" She what is? Would, what do you mean? She wouldn't know what you meant. Swamp by swamp ass. She wouldn't know. Well, I, then I would have to tell. Look, in, in Europe they have bidets, and we have, and now Cy with Cyroflex with that powerful hose, you can stick it in your rectum. You stick it. Oh, yes, socks, man. Well, yeah. well, you were you were always a proponent of, of anti swamp ass. Well, yeah, but I don't stick things in my ass. Maybe no, not do. not all the way up. No, not even. Well, me. you got to rinse the anus. You spread your cheeks in the shower, and do you? Don't stick it up. No, I no, I. What are you going to ask it? Go ahead. Don't well, go on about your thing. Well, I, want, I wasn't going to ask it about Swamp. It, has to, it would have to be something worthwhile to ask the pendulum something. Uh, let me have, let me well, have it's a sip. It's pendulum. It's an ambulance. The no, right the, the, no, the, the it's science a, of it spinning clockwise or counter no, no. is a pendulum. It's not a pendulum. It's an ambulance. Well, well, there are amulets. Don't ask it. There are talismans. There are talismans. Don't ask it. But the 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 mysticism in mysticism, but, but it's it's a pendulum. Don't ask, it's an amulet. But don't ask it. Don't say oh pendulum. Or well, I'm amulet. trying to pay respect. I wanted no, to no, pay no, attention no. to me. Stop. All right. You wound up today. But I wanted to pay attention you to me. Better, uh, how do I know it's? You better pull that down a little bit. How do I know? Out. Oh, you're right. How do I know it you're knows? Gonna break, you're gonna break the rest of it if you don't. How do I know it knows it's talking to me? Ask it. Do you know that I'm talking to you? Um. If I say, is, is it necessary for me to call you a pendulum when asking questions? Okay, it's saying yes. Can I ask it? Well, maybe it likes that. Maybe it does. You like to be called William. No, I, I don't. I can care less for you. You can call me asshole. I just don't care. <laughs> Swamp bass. Swamp Is it necessary to call you a pendulum? Are you a pendulum? No. So it's so it's contradicting. Are you an amulet? Oh God. Yes. All right. All right. How about how about I call it nothing? You're, you're how, not a, you're, you're not a pendulum. Oh. Must be mold spores out there. No, I'm dying. I took the so. better. All right, the best. But the bottom line. Just ask a question. And don't don't. It knows who you. Just say yes. Go right into it. Yeah. 
Well, I like to, I like to, I like no, to, no, like to ch chant and put no, a, no, send the energy no, into stop. cosmic energy. No, you're making fun of it now. You're making a comic of it. Don't do that. Okay. Um, the Republican Congress failing to come up with an immigration bill. Are they deliberately ignoring it? Oh, wow. Well. Because that was in the news today on CNN. So it's not that the subject is baffling them or confusing them. Uh, they, de uh, they deliberately don't want to solve the immigration problem. Ah, I kind of knew the Republicans were going to do that. Aha, uh -huh. mysticism. You know, um, I'm very happy that this 28-year-old uh, Hispanic female won beat an establishment Democrat in New York City for mm -hmm. for Congress, for a congresswoman, one of Bernie Sanders' girls. Let's see if things because you know, you know the the other guy. I think, I think his last name is Crowley. Let's see if things change. And an establishment Democrat gets big time campaign contributions. Let's see if it, uh, end of argument. Let's see if things. Change. Let's see if things change. That's all you can say. Another possibility is the system could be totally rigged. Well, duh. That's why I tell people to get to the point. Let's see what happens. End of discussion. Oh yeah, well, everything. Everything sounds good on paper. I know. That's why I say end of discussion. When when Joseph gives uh, and then I've had, I have my other friends even say, you know who gives a rat's ass? Like I tell people too, even if Russia uh, or North Korea fires off a nuke, uh, what's the worst thing that can happen? You die. That's it. End of argument. What yeah, are you worried about? The only problem about being a, a spirit traveling the universe is you don't get you don't have pleasures like eating and sexual how intercourse you, how do you know that i don't know it i think you're wrong can i have another one yeah I, I, i'm one. dripping like like well, like a, i'm no no i'm dripping like a take them get more no you know i'm not selfish Jimmy, let me finish. you don't know it's on other dimensions <laughs> what's the movie defending your life for example parallel universes Same dimensions dimensions this is better and you're not dead and you're healthy so we are not, not nobody said you're wrong the universe is a monarchy. In other words, what you don't, it's relative, what you don't miss, no, you don't no, it's what, care about. it's actually factual. <laughs> From what people I've met, hi, but that passed over said it's absolutely beautiful. They're not right. roaming the universe, Jimmy. And if you're, and if you're a spirit, you don't have a stomach. What's a spirit? No, if you're if you're a spirit, you don't get hungry, so you don't yes, you, you do. don't miss it. Yes, you do. You think there's a possibility they eat? They eat, they eat and the whole bit, but you can't get full, fat, and bloated the whole bit. I've met people that were passed over, and got back. They put, brought them back. I uh, met the girl that was stabbed through the heart in a robbery. I mean, uh, oh, you mean those that that hover over their body in, in the oh, hospital in the my, ER? My friend David, and then here's oddly enough, and they see the light. His nurse came in. Go to the light. His nurse came in like, Jimmy, you're wound up today. I, his nurse came in that night. Yeah. Would you take extra drugs today? Yeah. No, extra caffeine. I thought so. You know about she caffeine. In, you drink it 24 hours a day. No, I don't. I drink two cups a day. I'm only busting your chops. She came into his room that night and said, I saw it. She said, I, the nurse, I saw your body, your body leave your body. What? She saw the apparition of the her spirit leaving the body. No, of his leaving his right. body. And they always see like a, a, a beacon of white light in the corner of the room. They all did. They all did. So there is a possibility that spirits can enjoy similar pleasures as as human no. flesh and blood. No, there's no possibility. It's a fact that these people experience. It's not a possibility. Right. It's a fact. Yeah. But I think the thing about the Roman Catholic Church is they just want to control people. It's a church. No, they have their own laws. And they want to control oh, people. You quiet real quick. You want Jimmy, quiet. Now listen. Are any of the world's religions correct or right? Is religion a total load of bullshit? Yeah, probably to control the mess. Jimmy, quiet. There are your two answers right there. End of discussion. Yeah, it's about controlling of the masses, probably. Doesn't matter. 
It's bullshit is the bottom line. That's the bottom line. It's crap. But I mean, to, I mean to psychologically analyze the rules of the, the laws of a church. Why laws of a church? That's the point I made. It's bullshit. That's the end of the argument. It's bullshit. Like like with the Mormons. It's bullshit. What's that guy's name? John Smith and, and no, Brigham Young. Brigham Young is another another one named Smith that claimed Jesus I'll appeared it, to him. I'll do it again for you. That, yeah. Hey, Jimmy, no argument. But you don't like to psychoanalyze things. No. When it's over, it's over. <laughs> Are any of the world's religions, world, correct or right? There There's go. really no reason to discuss religion. This is all bullshit. Isn't it? I said end of discussion. End of discussion. It says it's bullshit. No reason to discuss it. Yeah. Why discuss bullshit? I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> well, some may say professional sports is bullshit. How can it be bullshit? You're playing a game. We're talking about people worshiping the uh, 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 supernatural. Oh, You've okay. never seen. I got yeah, you. That, Jimmy, there's no comparison here. You're getting way off on a tangent. Here. Right. There's no comparison. No, I, I'm, I'm just saying there are people have different interests, that's all. That's got nothing to do with it. They're worshiping crap. Watching sports, do you like sports or you don't like sports? Religion is bullshit. Either you like soccer or you don't like it. It just, happens that, a, a it just happens that Americans can't stand it because it's a slow scoring game. Soccer's not a sport. Isn't that so, sir? What's that? Soccer is a very slow scoring game. That's oh, why Americans don't care wait for wait it. Wait he just called you a sir. What do you want me to call him? Well, hey, you? Are you a sir? So I do hang out with Paul McCartney every now and then. I Remember yeah. when I used to call you, hey you, man? Hey, man. I don't want to say, hey well, you. I, I do. I give it, I get everything. Give it to me. What are the things that I would be rude if I said, hey what you? One of the things I used to call you, remember the, a couple years ago? Beep, 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 beep. Well, that was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then you called me asshole, so it didn't matter. Nice. It all worked out. We all said, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, just, I want to you know, be. The only thing you're missing today is a little fake parrot on your shoulder. <clears throat> He's very pyro oh, he's pi pyrotic. Uh, yeah, very pyrotic. Uh, have you oh, been? Right on? With this, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now you caught on. In the big hoop. Yeah. Have you been, all right? Yeah, hanging in. Yes. Yeah, okay. This is rare that I see you in about a month. Usually it's a couple years every time I see you. <laughs> yeah. You know where I got my hoop? From uh, uh, on, online. It's from China. It's steel. It's, it's uh, stainless steel. Oh, yeah. Don't tarnish. Only like a couple bucks. Yeah. Free shipping. Yeah. Etsy or eBay I or Amazon. Okay. Etsy, I All think right. it was Etsy. Yeah. I used to do all silver, and then I realized, you know what? Stainless steel ain't bad. My skin isn't allergic to it, and it don't tell me. You know something? A lot of stainless steel jewelry. Uh, 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 a lot of stainless steel jewelry is very attractive nowadays. It is. It is. You know, artisan. They, you know, they even they even have wedding bands made of titanium yeah. or stainless steel. Yeah, encrusted with the diamonds. It's yeah, really why? Bad. Why? It's like badass, but elegant. It's, why it's why get ripped off if you get married? Just get it. They're beautiful wedding bands. Yep. Titanium, the strongest metal. Who the fuck's gonna know? It's cubic you know, zirconia or a diamond. You know what's These a are cubic zirconia. You know how many people ask me if they're a diamond just because they're not huge? You know who sells cubic zirconia? Yeah, diamonds. You know. You know who sells all kinds of cubic zirconia stud earrings? The Dollar Zone, what I was, uh, yeah. the place I told you about that has all the bananas. Right. They have every, you want artificial sapphire, ruby, regardless, it, it, diamond, they got them all. Cubic zirconias. And they said that CZs are, <clears throat> in appearance, are equal to a very expensive, high quality diamond. So why buy? A diamond and pay thousands of dollars for a diamond. Oh, I hate those Jared commercials. You know that the Beers Mining Company in South Africa deliberately holds back on exportation of diamonds because diamonds are really not a precious stone anymore. There's so many of them. It's a game, like the stock market. Really, what's it going to be worth in a desert? Again, it's all stuff. And then try to resell I mean, it. I could understand, you know, certain things like a car, you know, right. I could, you know, BMW, I could take, right. you know, as opposed to a Toyota. Right. It's just the engineering. Well, try to re- But try as far as aesthetics goes, the jewelry and stuff like that, you know, 
It's a bag. It has to drop a bag. Yeah. And you ever see platinum? It's it's almost the same color as silver. It's like it's like it's all in the mind. Like my uncle really? says, prestige is all in the mind. It's like the Beatles said, man, the yellow submarine, it's all in the mind, you know. Is that what yellow submarine meant? I always yeah. wonder what the lyrics meant. That's the whole thing about it, you know, it's all in the mind. In other words, it's what you perceive. Right. Your perception, yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, you go in the dollar zone and you go, you're going to see a shitload of great bandanas. Yeah, I haven't and, been to that one in a while. I oh. usually just hit Dollar Tree, Tree around the corner from me. Well, Dollar Tree is... I know exactly the place you're talking about. Dollar, dollar Tree's corporate. This is privately owned, so they can get they can order whatever they want. Yeah, Indian guys. They usually... Right. I haven't been there in quite a while. But and they I even sell the I bamboo... every now and then, and they would get, like, this lots of stuff in. They even have the know, bamboo certain, plant. Like, the axe, this, uh, the odor and spray. It's like this huge monster bin, usually in the store for, like, five bucks. Yeah. Each one would be two, and then you go a week later, and right. they're all gone. I use, Somebody smart, you know, I use them the, all up, probably sells money. I use the old-fashioned razor with the Wilkinson sword blades. Harmon, Harmon discounts wants five dollars a package. The dollar zone wants a buck. A dollar for Wilkinson sword razor blades. Yeah, they go like that sometimes. Right, and they got the bamboo plants, I mean, oh, a cool for a buck each, yeah. You know. But I'm saying, as soon as you go in there, right next to the front window are all the CZs, all lined up, and then you go, you, you hang a right, and you go to the far right corner, and oh, all the bandanas are there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, usually we're in the winter time, there's all the winter they like, got hats and stuff. Burgundy, the navy blue, green, light red, deep red, which is my favorite color. Deep, deep red, black, like burgundy. Black yeah. with the paisley, fancy paisley. Uh, uh, they had, sometimes you get scully ones with, with, with uh, skull and crossbones. I have, I have, uh, I still have a few. I gave my favorite one to, to uh, 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 my girlfriend, but I, I the, the one where it was the big skull with glowing eyes, like, but they have tons of great bandanas there. Mm -hmm. You'll have, you have the greatest bandana collection that anybody would ever have. He's not scaring you away, is he? A buck a piece? No. A buck a piece. A buck a piece. No, he likes band bandanas. Why? And I'm telling him where to go to get a big variety of bandanas. What do you want those for? Yeah, he likes them. Why do you like them? What's the matter with you? Because you they're attractive. What's your problem? Because yeah. you don't have to do your hair. And they have cubic zirconias. Yeah, you can also cut them all off, too. Word. Oh, and, they have, so, uh, and they have cubic zirconia stud earrings. Mike, my, years ago, I, I think I told you, he knows, I played football my whole life. You played what? Football. Years ago, the blacks, you know, most of my teams are always half black, half white. A few Latinos. You must have kicked some of We did. People were afraid to play us. But the blacks back then, about 20 years ago, their saying was, uh, word up, word up. What does that mean? Well, we left practice one day, and a bunch of my teammates black, about four or five, were in a <clears throat> brand new Mustang pulling out. I said, God, wait, wait, wait. I ran over, I went, up with words, up with words. <laughs> up with words. They said, Billy, get out of here. <laughs> up with words. I used to love to mess up a saying on purpose. I love to do that. Oh, yeah. just a bus chops. Say it all proper. Just to have fun. Now, if I bus chops, he yells at me. Banging, man, banging. Oh, yeah, you gotta. It's very hard against the surface, sir. Oh, and boy, could we play. Oh, could we play. Oh, I'm sure a different game. Remember like Barney that. Miller, who was the white cop, used time. to do that? He's I remember how we got on our guys once. You got to Because we gave nuts. up a touchdown during the season. We had a fit. No, we just said, what the fuck are you doing out there? Oh. Yeah, we, we gave up a touchdown. We don't give up touchdowns. What, the purpose? What are you saying? No, we, like we gave up. Uh, he got beaten. Well, the corner of the safety, I forget who it was. But we didn't give up touchdowns. It was our first touchdown. The defense gave up. I see. And we had a fit. My other buddy, Dennis Reese, our safety once in a game, got beaten. And the guy that was dancing in the end zone. Dennis shoved him. I said, what are you shoving it for? He's showboating. He said, let the guy enjoy his touchdown. Number two, why did you let him beat you? Okay, as long, Dennis? As long as he really said, scored. why did you let him beat you? And Dennis didn't know what to say. I said, let him celebrate. 
Don't let him beat but you. But it was again. a bona fide touchdown. I guess besides the point. So don't let him beat you. You see how guys got, have to get their mentality in order. Yeah, absolutely. And that's Egos the whole. Start in the way I said, hey, he that happens with competitive sports a lot. Egos, adrenaline, endorphins, whatever. Yeah. But then again, it comes down to your leader. Testosterone. And I was, oh, yeah. sadly, I, I, I didn't, sure I I didn't like it. I was always captain, mm -hmm. but my teams always took all my personality and had fun. I made sure it was fun. I had more players for other teams saying, God, trade for me, please. You guys have so much fun. Because the quarterback. I made it for, no, not the quarterback, the captain. Right. I made them have fun. I made sure it was fun. I joked around. I joked around all the guys at the coin toss in the middle. I had the referees laughing. I used to go over and shake the hands of the other team before the game. And I bet they play better with humor, with, the, with having they fun. They were more relaxed. When yeah. they panicked, you'd see them in the huddle, but... You never forget the eye contact. They're all looking at you in the yeah, huddle, and you know they're depending on you as the quarterback and captain. Yeah. And I said, settle down, settle down. <clears throat> and they always, you know, some guys would talk, said, no need to talk. I only have so many seconds to call a play and get it off. Yeah. Settle down, you know? Yep. And they were like, you're right, you're right, Billy, you're right. After the play was over, they were like, you're right. This guy's a push guy. I said, I told you. Relax. People panic and they yak and they can't shut up. Mm -hmm. It's panic talk. It really like, is. That's, and I try to tell him sometimes. Get, make your point. Just, make know, one your one point two, and get out. Yeah, one or two diarrhea. You, you don't have to go on. Talk, just we had a couple. Like this we had very few players. Just some of the very few players that didn't get along. We had one with a team. We looked over. And you saw the whole team together, and he'd be standing by himself. Nobody wanted to be around him. That's called bad chemistry in the locker room. Nobody wants to be around him. Oh, oh, oh by the way, don't, don't vote for the bandanas on Sunday because of the blue law of County. Oh, yeah. They can't, they can't, they they can't sell it. Yeah, they can't sell it. But there's so much, so much psychology to sports. People don't understand unless they're a true athlete. They don't get it. They don't get the hit. When I've had people, when I've had people say, and two, you get on the sideline with us, and you hear, much less if you were ever out in the field, and you were in the huddle, shit. And they were on the sideline. They heard stuff. They were like, "Whoa, what the hell is that?" I said, it's an, uh, "You don't know the game until you're on the sideline. The coaches don't know the game. They don't get it. It's so psychological. It's not just." Ability. Yeah. It's mind game. Sure. You know, how you settle your team down. I'll, like I said, I will never forget their faces, their eye contact. Mm -hmm. They're depending on you to settle them down and control them. Mm -hmm. You're their leader. Like you're going into war. Really. Yeah. Yeah. You're going into that. athletic war. And they, they, you're their leader. They want to hear what you, what your, what's your plan. And, uh, oh, I, mean, I played 37 years. That's why I walk so bad. 37 years I played. That's why I walk bad. But you, you had to deal with a lot of office politics in, in There's football, politics too. In, oh, the politics in sports is uh, unbelievable. It's sick. It's sick. I mean, I mean, you would think based on merit, you would think based on merit that the greatest people would, would be pushed and promoted. They're not. It's not always the case. They're it's not. not always the case, man. When I moved up here from Texas, it's not the big August of... 68, went to sign up for football in Ridgewood. This is my first taste of politics. I said, I'm here to sign up for football. What position? Quarterback. Oh, I've already got my quarterback. I said, you've never seen me throw. He said, it doesn't matter. I said, there's never been an arm like me. When the NFL says, you're not human. You're beyond the NFL. But after he saw you throw, he still said it didn't matter, right? Yeah, they, they don't listen. Because his son-in-law got the spot. No, so? his, his quarterback's parents, he always had dinner with him. <laughs> Good friends. Oh, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> I wasn't even playing yet. You know, but when, when the NFL, you know, when the NFL says you're beyond the NFL, they sense, you're not. They sense this, this something. We had this one guy I met, nice guy. He's the one that rates all, I forget how many thousands of college players for the draft. We were talking in the cafe at Barnes & Noble in Paris. I love that place. He said, Billy, you got to see this one guy. I said, he goes, besides you, he goes, you're not normal. 
The one in Clifton is good too. He said, no, yeah, yeah, no. Nah, no, Barnes like, and Noble and Route 3. No, nah, I didn't like, I'm very uncomfortable. So John and I used to go there. We went there once. Well, the two. nicest one is the one you used to Yeah, that's the mother, that's the mothership up here. Like the one in that's the mothership. But, did, did, just but this we, went, we went down there once years ago, John and I. Traffic in the and, we, and we said, this sucks. We went back up here and he goes, uh, well, they they old. do they do some book signings in in the Barnes and Noble and Clifton. Sometimes they, they do. do more up here. But we're getting off mm. the subject. What were we talking about? About yeah, politics and sports and how you you got the shaft. I mean, these people. Yeah, when the NFL says you're not human, you're in a league of your own. You're beyond the NFL. Man, God. You know, nobody can throw a football like me. I said, I've got to wait. I said, I wait for nobody. My parents were so proud. So you guys can't throw it off. It's a shame. Baseball players and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I made more great friends on all my teams and the opposing teams. You know, you just, the enemy. Well, they hate each other. We don't hate anybody. Stop the bullshit. Yeah. Don't give me your crap. Nobody hates anybody. Stop with the mouthing off. And, and they're usually non-athletes that make the statements. You know nothing about the game or about sports. You know? Now, I hate these two teams hate each other. No, we don't. Let, let me tell you about good sportsmanship. I, I was watching, what was it, the 1970 World Series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Cincinnati Reds. The big red machine. When, when Baltimore won... The, that's World Series. Sparky Anderson went into the Orioles dugout and dugout shook, or locker shook room? Locker, uh, locker room and shook everybody's hand and, and congratulated that's Earl Weaver and yeah. said, "Earl Weaver deserved it. I want to congratulate but the Baltimore Orioles." But you always do it anyway. When the game's over, you always line up and go past each other yeah. and shake hands. But he actually went into the yeah. locker room. You should. You should. When and and Absolutely. and he stood there while. You remember one thing Earl I told Weaver. my players. The, they are the not owner, our enemy. The Orioles. Mm -hmm. They're not our enemy. They're our opponent. Mm -hmm. We just want to get more points or runs than they do. That's it's all we it's want. the game. Once you start getting personal and emotions. Yeah. yeah. But, but that, I respected that. Good, he okay. went out of his way to go into, into the locker room and do that. And he stood there while he, while the owner of the Orioles received the, the, the trophy. Most and, people don't understand the psychology. That's why they have been... God knows how many books written about the psychology of sports. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody says it. sports is not just a sport. It builds character. Yeah. It, it teaches you, it trains you. Absolutely. And people don't get it. That's lost on a lot of people. I've had guys, we've had so, so many pro other sports guys, pro wrestlers, pro uh, soccer players, try out for our team and walk off. They said, you guys are out of your mind. <laughs> I said, this is football. So you're gonna get hit. They thought we were nuts. You gotta be new. They think, they think right. because you're big, you're good. Size doesn't mean jack shit. A lot of big guys run out of gas quick. No, yeah. they're just not as strong because they're big. No, I mean stamina, endurance. Oh, uh, but no, well, even that, but physically, but yeah. like we're talking tryouts before there's no endurance there. Get up there, they're getting hit by a fake to the back, and he comes up and wham, knocks the shit out of them. So that has nothing to do with stamina. They just can't take it. They're what? They're big. It's a sprint. It's a sprint with with physical contact. Just hit them. It's, it's, it's a sprint. Hey, the old saying: the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah. They go down. I said hit them. I loved. The, I loved the hitting of football. And I used to love the bigger they were when I was a tailback in Tennessee. <laughs> I said, oh. I knocked the shit out of linemen. Remember how Mark Bavaro wasn't afraid to get tackled? Like, he would just plow you right be, through? You can't be. But I think the best had to be John Mackey, the ultimate tight end. Those, pic those pictures of John Mackey for the Colts with six guys on him running down the field, and he didn't, they, they didn't get him down. He walked them into the end zone. That's the best. My dad always pointed out Walter Payton to me. Yeah, never played high school ball. What did, what did Walter Payton do in high school? I don't know. He was in the band. Holy crap, yeah, really? Like, what happened to Michael Jordan in basketball in high school? He got kicked, right? Off cut, the cut. College. He got cut. Jeez. Went in his room and cried to hurt. Well, a lot of them do. Tom Brady cried during the draft because he was taken in the last round late. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady was off and nobody would touch him. You know why the Patriots took him? He was about all that was left. <laughs> Is that the story? Wow. Yeah, and what was his saving grace? Oh, and the grace. Patriots. Drew Bledsoe getting hurt. <laughs> Brady was on the bench. Drew Bledsoe getting hurt. You weren't crazy about Fran Tarkin tonight. 
The scrambler. The scrambler. Scramblers don't make it in the NFL. Just tell. I told everybody, you better stop your goddamn running. They're going to ruin your career. This was a, when Big Shot RG3 was being drafted. Well, he didn't have a career, did he? He got hurt because of a scrambling. Yeah, who flourished? Well, he got hurt too. My Colts uh, and Luck. But, you know, but we had more winning season. RG3 never had. I think he had one. You can't run. When you're getting, you're getting, in the NFL, you're getting chased down by linemen. Remember that. They're ready to destroy you. It's a whole new game. <laughs> ready, ready, to, ready to flatten you like a pancake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got knocked flat on my ass a couple of times in football. That's, That's fun. I love the hitting. I love the hitting. Oh, I love the hitting. I used to look, look over the line. And look, I said, hit me all you want, fellas. Just let me get the ball off. Yeah. Then you can hit me. And people sliding around at Lambeau Field in the snow and ice. That, just, that uh, is real cool to watch. No, it's not. That's not how football is going to be. These people say that's the way football should be. I said, you show me the book. These people say you get used to it. You never get used to it. The weather sucks. No. Weather's a neutralizer. Always remember that. It makes a better team play less. It brings you down a level. Shit weather? Rainy weather, oh, yeah. a nightmare for any quarterback. I used to have corner, corner, cornerbacks where they said, yeah, you don't have to throw the goddamn ball. They said, yeah, baby. You see, it's weather, it's a neutralizer. The better team doesn't play as well, you can't. It slows the receivers down. They slip, they fall, you can't grip the ball. The whole game has changed. They don't get it. People, these people that know the sport. I said, you're a pussy ass. Give me five minutes from the field. I'll take you to school real fast. Oh, I took a number to school real fast. I said, I'm going to shut your mouth real quick. Yeah, I got you know? with music and movies. Man. Oh, they, everybody knows everything. And it's always better than non-players. Really, you got to be open now. They, I mean, you, can, you can know your role and know your confidence, but you got to still be open and have that. Like you said, learn the game. Learn the game before you open your mouth. Absolutely. Don't be a Monday morning <coughs> ass. Neutral man. Oh, these guys. Yeah, that people want to come to. Oh, they yak, 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 yak. I said, you don't know jack shit. I said, stop it with your mouth. They make their comments. I'm like, oh, please. My buddy Matt laughs. He goes, oh, Billy, you destroy them if you got them out there. Who's that there? Was, I went to one football game once at Giants Stadium. It was the Steelers versus the Jets. And I had snow coming down on the back of my neck, and it wasn't fun. <laughs> to, to have, I think, I think to, it was like you, and you had a coat on. How'd you like to be in the game doing that stuff? Well, all your trouble. No, yeah, I mean, that's all. Sitting on the bench, I remember sitting at Giants Stadium. But they wouldn't let me bring a thermos a into the stadium. Jet games freezing. Security won't let me bring a therm a thermos of hot tea or anything into the, into the stadium. When was the last time you were there? Oh, this was like, oh God, over 10 years ago, but they well, wouldn't well, let me well, bring it. Well, that's after 9-11. Come on, Jimmy. That's how. Absolutely. Yeah, they, you know the rules, just like traveling is on jets now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a certain amount of liquid, oh, certain amount of liquid. But what's that got to do with the game? I don't No, it has, to, it has to do with playing without a dome in all kinds of weather. The, well, fa this, the fans this, have this, to endure it. This is Jersey. The one place that will never get a Super Bowl again, they destroyed the one Super Bowl they got because they took away uh, uh, tailgating. You couldn't even tailgate here. They didn't give the host, the mayor of the host city, East Rutherford, a ticket. You know how he got his ticket? Mike Colts. Mike Colts. Ursay heard that and says, you're in my box. The NFL, the NFL would not give the mayor of the host city a ticket? What are you, an asshole? Oh my God, that's horrible. Think about it. the whole city. Bring your fat. It's on us. Have a whole buffet layout. The whole bit. Nothing. My Colts owner got him. So you're with us. What a greedy ass my, thing. My, to do. my point is that's your NFL, which is why it's known as the NFL No Fun League. Mm, yeah, I heard that one. You're a bunch of jerk off. And it might have been Goodell is about that Goodell is the I mean, most. That might have been a, a, a bunch of riffraffs who really ripped it up to people. That's what right. Who's that? The, the, the fans, you know. What, what are you talking about? Riffraffs. People getting wasted and throwing shit. I mean, you know, how kids. can you when there's no tailgating anyway? There's no tailgating. I'm saying that matter we're taking it. But yeah, every other take, Super Bowl, 49 Super Bowls had tailgating. Jesus, a different. 
You remember they couldn't get out of the stadium? It took them three and four hours to get the mass transit to leave when the game was over. People had a fit. I don't even remember what year that was. It was only like four or five years ago. People had a fit. It's been a while since We blew it. We will not get another Super Bowl. They blew it. They don't get it. This is who you got in your front office at the NFL. Oh, they're geniuses. No tailgating whatsoever. None. No tailgating. Incredible, huh? Only Super Bowl ever. <laughs> Only Super Bowl ever. No tailgating. Now, what's your purpose? So they're charging you to park your car for every little thing, and they, you can't tailgate. Take all the fun out of, this, out of the sport. Because the greedy bastards want you to buy food. Once you, once you get inside, that's probably what it is. No, that's not true because why can you tailgate at every other game during the year and other Super Bowls around the league everywhere? Think about that. Why is this the only one that you couldn't tailgate? So you can't bring the money issue into it, it doesn't make sense. Everything else has had tailgating. Except the one. The one in Jersey. Well, then again, we didn't need a new stadium. Let's be honest, okay? Neutralized. those colors. And you wouldn't give the host mayor a ticket. Smart people. Oh, they're brilliant. Yeah, commission. Goodell's an asshole. He's the worst commit. He's a yes man. Have you ever, ever seen all the strings hanging off of him? Goodell? No. Yeah. You know, you gotta, man. He's a pup man. You know, you got to respect the Chicago Bears still have Soldier Field, right, Billy? You, well, when no. you don't need a new stadium, you don't need a new stadium. Well, I think they should, of all places, they should have a dome. You didn't need a new stadium here. The old dome, the old stadium was wonderful. They could have saved probably over a billion and put a dome on it. It would have paid for itself in a year with the concerts and the other show events. It could have done. Everybody said the old stadium, the old one was best. They don't get it. This is all politics and, and corporate skyboxes, executive suites. People That's complained about is. the wind in Giant Stadium. Oh, please. Like, this is any better? <laughs> no. <clears throat> These people are morons. And then they screw you. Look at the tickets for, to buy a ticket. You have to buy the preseasons at over a thousand and some odd dollars. You know how many families have held on for 40, 50, 60 and have given up their tickets? You say, I've had enough. And of course, the, own, the owners want the city to pay for the new stadiums, right? I mean, huh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I don't know who pays for it, but <clears throat> the fans get screwed at the, the end. Waiting list is so long for season tickets. Well, not anymore. It's not too bad because a lot of people gave them up. <clears throat> they got fed up. Right on. And they, and you can't have season tickets with the Jets when they're advertising on TV tickets for fourteen dollars. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my friend in, in uh, New Orleans says he paid like not to change the subject ten dollars for a baseball stadium ticket because may, maybe people are just not going. Well, you look up on TV, the stands are empty at most of these events. They're empty. Look at all the bowl games in college. They, you know, it's a camera will not show many shots of the upper decks. They're empty. Empty. People are fed up. They're bored. Mm -hmm. NFL attendance and viewership on TV is way, way down. People are fed up and bored. They're like, I don't care anymore. You made a big stink about that national anthem. Crap. So what? You're right. You're yeah, right. Stand. Neil, I don't care what you have to do, okay? That's all you do. Why are you talking about it? You got good players. Why why bust their chops about that? I don't about care that? what you do. If you stand, then you do. If you want to sit there and fart, go ahead. I don't care. I just don't it's like care. Jerry Springer show and, 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 and all the all, all the um, all the evangelical religious nuts, the flag wavers, they made such a big deal out of that. Oh, he's nothing. Such a big deal. It's a move. It's a protest. I'm just looking for moves and protests. I heard from a friend of mine this morning. He said he saw on the news that a, a, an atheist is suing a town or whatever he lives in because they had a long time monument of a cross. Yeah. Somewhere. So? I don't know. He didn't know. He didn't that, know. And that bothered him. Who was this? An atheist. I said, well, why is he doing it now? If it's been there a long time, why not 20, 30 years ago? 
I said, why would a court give him credence? Why would a court, if I was just say, fuck you. Everything's an issue. I don't care whether you're an atheist. When the Jews a couple years ago had a fit because the airports didn't have a menorah, but they had Christmas trees or whatever. When people say at the Christmas, Merry Christmas. I'm a Jew. Some, oh, I don't, some, you know how many times I've had Jews go by me? Happy Hanukkah. I said, I just, you too. Send to you. But you know, some of them have Christmas trees because they like it. Just say it. Yeah. Don't be so thin skinned. Oh, I screw around. I told my, uh, fr- I, my other friend, Christmas, don't be so thin skinned. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm not Jewish. Oh, I'm not. I'm not Christian. I'm so not this. I'm not. I don't give a rat's ass fuck what you are. Happy holidays. That's why they say no, happy no, no, holidays. no, 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 yeah. no. That's why I don't. That's beautiful. That's meeting the middle. I don't believe in meeting in the middle when they say happy holidays. That's yeah. to pacify both sides. No, you say merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, or whatever. Or both happy holidays. Let's pacify everybody. Make everybody happy. It's politically okay. correct. Yeah. Oh no, I don't believe in political correctness. Neither do no, I. You say what you want and just say it back. Happy Hanukkah. I'm not Jewish. I'd say the same to you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm not black, obviously. Happy Kwanzaa. I'm not a black guy. No, I'm going to say well the same to you. Oh, yeah. Happy Dwali. Is that simple? Right Are you that thin skinned where it's going to bother you? It may make such a big deal out of it. Oh, I'm so sick of thin skin. I'm, I'm off the fucking eggshells, okay? You all can shove it if you don't like it. That's the way I feel. I'm going to say Merry Christmas, Happy Chinook, Hanukkah, however you want to goddamn pronounce it. You have a great Kwanzaa or whatever you want to call it. All right, just have a good time, all right? Absolutely. Get out of my face with it and accept it. I get tired of the bullshit. Oh, by the way, is that a Timex? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You know what? They look just as good as, as any other expensive watch. How'd you get off on the watch now? Because I was admiring it. Nice I know, but we're talking about Kwanzaa holidays. I don't care. I, I like the cream color. I like the ivory color. Yeah, here's a, here's a game It's game. a good looking watch. Have you guys ever hung out? What? Have you ever hung out at this Gabriel's bar? I've never been there. Yeah, I like once. He, he knows Just it. Just once? One well, of the best restaurants there is. Is it? They still have a comedy yeah, club? And, yeah, bananas right there. See oh, the sign? Oh, yeah. the buses I saw, there. I saw, Do, I saw Dom Irera there in like 2000. My friends that work there for Amtrak, they have to stay there. And uh, a couple of them, are, a number of them are from Philadelphia, famous for the cheesesteak. Okay? Billy said, uh, Tommy said, Billy, Gabriel's, their cheesesteak is the best I've ever had in the world. It puts Philadelphia's to shame. I did? And they're well known for their prime rib. They say it's incredible. Still? He said that is not a normal hotel restaurant. He said it's not normal. Right he now, said it's like that good. As, as it stands today? Yeah. He said their cheesesteak puts Philly's to shame. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a yeah. Deal. that's how good it is. the food is. The Why? Well, it's just not a, it's not a big bar. I mean, it's in, it's in the restaurant. A wrap around a little wooden thing and maybe 10, 12 seats, give or take. But it's booze. Yeah, it's certainly You know what's funny? Why? Why do you want to know? It's in the bartender. Oh, oh, oh really? Go, why? And I, and I love comedy as well. So. You, you know what's funny? Continental breakfast. Well, Banana's been there 40 some odd, 50 years. Right. They don't own it, they don't have a spot in there. Yeah. But Anna's does not have a spot. Really? What are you saying? They save their money by every Friday and Saturday only. They rent or lease the banquet room. And that's where Bananas oh, is. So they don't have the a freestanding Bananas only spot. Oh. It's one of the banquet rooms. Like it's always been there. Because it's yeah. only two days a week. They, they two rent, nights a week. They rent the spot. That's cool. That's, that's smart. Weekends? Yeah, Friday and Saturday. That's smart. Yeah. Is there a bar in the back? No, right? In you the gotta, back? You gotta walk out to get, the, get alcohol during the comedy show? Well, they set something up like probably like a, like a makeshift well, bar. I, I, that's where they make the money. I'm not sure if Bananas They're has a trying. bar inside or not. I don't know if they bring one in or not, but... For where that bar is, you're saying that wraparound well, It's right in Gabriel's, the restaurant itself. That's in the restaurant? In the restaurant. In the banquet, from what I remember. Yeah. It's right there, right it's next just, door. But you gotta walk through, it's a separate room? Yeah. It's a bank over Okay. Like you can't see the bar from... You no. You can see the separate bar room. from the audience. No. Okay. You're a mixologist. Yeah. No, he's mixologist. bartender. Stop it, Jimmy. If now, you want to get politically now, now, you notice how Continental Breakfast... Happy Kwanzaa! You notice how Continental Breakfast... 
Nobody wants to talk about continental breakfast. No, you know we don't. how continental breakfast is. I don't care. Do you, know, you, know, you know where you can get something to eat and go. Oh. Because you're talking about continental breakfast. You notice breakfast. how continental. What, do you want to fly over there? It's, take, it's taking really me do. five minutes. Shh, do you want to fly over there? Yeah. Well, we already know Are you that. Are going to go over now? No, not today. I look like shit. I don't really uh, want to go down. Are you good? You know how to mix them? Yeah, yeah. mixology. You are good? Yeah, great with the people. Pick us martini. Yeah. Oh, no, he's a martini expert. It's like that natural There's only feel. one martini, you know. Natural feel. Traditional. Are you tell the gin? Apple, with chocolate. Those are martinis. No, but there are martini. other drinks. There's only one martini. It's <laughs> traditional. And gin sucks. It's, it, it's vodka. Oh, is it vodka? And it's three of us, not two. As it stands, not four. I, I can't even smell gin. Two parts That's vodka, one part but dry vermouth. It's two to one. Dirty, uh, man. Three olives, no ice, ice on the side. You add as you go because they suck you with the prices. Mm. Don't want to put it in with ice. You get two sips, it's gone. No, yeah. Well, you got to make it cold. You I shake it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, but then again, you pour the whole thing in. Give me the ice on the side. Don't leave yeah. the ice in the glass. Oh, yeah, no, leave the ice. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, see you over there. You know, I'll, I'll, see, I'll see you up there. Um, um, continental breakfast varies from hotel to hotel. Hotel, hotel to hotel. Sometimes... It's, it's good, it's worth it, sometimes it's crap. It's a joke. That's why I'm just saying the word, the term continental breakfast. Yeah. Um, I always thought that uh, it was traditionally martini. Well, martini. You, you Marti think you know everything, but you don't. No, actually, I think, I think the original martini is gin and dry vermouth. But then the vodka martini, which I had both, I happen to like the vodka martini better. Yeah, and he and he told me it should be because I have the, the stainless steel shaker at home. Mm. It's yeah. What did I say before? Two parts vodka, one part dry vermouth. Now, did you know? Speaking of speaking of bartending, did you know that dry vermouth, when it was invented, it was like in the Middle Ages. It was actually a medicinal wine, like a, or a dessert wine. Oh yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. Sh like they did an English girl. She just had vermouth, sweet vermouth on the rocks yeah, all the time. Like sherry or or port. Yeah. It, it's which happened to love the Taylor port, by the way. Uh, Taylor. Taylor port. I think it's Concord grapes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like um, the Australian uh, um, uh, yellowtail wine, Shiraz. Yellowtail Shiraz. It's a kick-ass. Yeah, Pinot Noir. And Cabernet Sauvignon, but the Shiraz and, and uh, Pinot Noir is my favorite. But um, port wine is excellent, 18% alcohol, I believe. I do, uh, sometimes I'm invited to a port, yeah. 18%. Now, sometimes, uh, occasionally, I'm invited to a live YouTube stream booze video show by a friend of mine from uh, uh, Jay Terrio from New Orleans, and he, and he has me on live. And we're with other people. Sometimes we do certain bourbon or Scotch whiskey or rum or, or craft beer. Uh, I'm into craft beer. Uh, and, 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 and these are connoisseurs on on hard liquor or wine. And these guys, you know, they can they taste the Scotch and and they can tell you the difference between one Scotch to another or one bourbon to another. I mean, me, I do my best to hang in there with them, but I'm not by no means an expert or a connoisseur. Sometimes all they gotta do is look or smell it. Yeah, they can say, well, I, I smell, uh, I, I sense nuttiness, I, I sense uh, woodiness, wood, and uh, fruit. That was um, Taylor Tawny Port Wine, because Tawny Port has a caramel flavor. So you can, you can, you can, you can sense it was Asian wood. Mm. But, but my question on the show was, you notice everything is fermented in oak, oak barrels. Mm. So it seems like oak is the wood of choice for fermentation. Mm. It just seems like that. You, you know. have Maker's Mark? I, I, I like Maker's Mark. I had Knob Creek, Jim Beam. Um, Heaven Hill is the best, buy, the best bargain in bourbon. It, Heaven Hill for like $12. Ten or twelve dollars a bottle, you can't beat it. Heaven Hill, with with the black label, is it's a small company. It's Kentucky Bourbon. For the money, it's the best buy. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.